President Donald Trump has been in office just over two weeks now, and there hasn't been a dull moment. He's been pretty busy, but has he been living up to his campaign promises? For more on that, we ask a presidential historian, Mike Purdy. He joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Now, Perfect. we've all heard Trump uh, say politicians are all talk, no action. You said in a recent New York Times, uh, rather New York Daily News article that Trump is up to bat and he needs to demonstrate that he's all action. Uh, in Trump's first week, he signed several executive orders. Are these largely symbolic or do they speak more than that? Well, executive orders are a combination of the two. I mean, sometimes they are symbolic. So for instance, his executive order to begin construction of the wall between the United States and Mexico, um, that is largely symbolic because he needs Congress to appropriate the money for that. But it's a way for him to uh, demonstrate to his base uh, supporters that he is taking action. Um, other executive orders that he takes um, are more substantive, such as the travel ban. But in, in some ways, uh, some of the executive orders you might say are simply a signed tweet and uh, is, is continuing the practice that he uh, began during the campaign of, uh, of tweeting. And, and in some senses, um, I think that the president has not yet made the pivot from uh, being a campaigner to being president. And uh, he's continuing with some of the same uh, rhetoric, some of the same methods. He now has more methods, of course, at his disposal, such as executive orders and presidential memoranda. You mentioned that travel ban and that executive order on refugees stranded hundreds of refugees and others at airports across the country, uh, created a lot of confusion over whether green card holders could enter or leave the country, ultimately causing a lot of bad press for Trump, uh, not to mention protests. Did this overshadow any good things that he's doing? Well, in some ways, I think it did. And, and a lot really depends on what end of the political spectrum you come from. I think there are many of Donald Trump's uh, staunchest supporters who would say uh, this was a minor blip. Um, for others who are looking for the president to uh, govern more from the center and to govern in a way that uh, is good for all Americans, which he said that he would do, um, this negative publicity isn't uh, particularly good for him. And we've seen even people within his own party uh, criticize him quite a bit. Is that something that we've seen in the past with, with other presidents? You know, generally when a new president comes into office, uh, by people from both parties generally. And uh, you've probably seen the statistics that Trump comes into office with a lower approval rating than any other president since polling began uh, during Harry Truman's administration. So the latest figures that I've seen are just 43% approve of what the president is doing. So I think some of his actions, uh, the, the travel ban executive order as an example, um, which were not, according to reports, particularly uh, well vetted. Uh, many people in uh, agencies who were responsible for enforcing it weren't told of it. And so you have a small group of White House advisors who is uh, advising the president and uh, they're taking action without uh, being particularly collaborative. So one of the things I think we have to remember is Trump comes to the presidency as the first president without political experience, military experience, or being in a significant government appointed office. And uh, he comes from the business world, and in that business world, of course, he had the ability to say, do this, do that, and it happened. Um, he's now the head of a vast bureaucracy, which requires um, more uh, collaboration. Um, so it remains to be seen how well he um, makes that change from a campaigner and an anti-establishment uh, politician to and And going back to that travel ban, have we seen anything like this in the past where uh, such a vast, uh, broad ban on so many people? 
We have not. Um, you know, like so many things that we would say about uh, the campaign uh, last year, that it was unprecedented, that never before have things like this happened, um, similarly with the travel ban. And I, and I think that President Trump is doing some of that as a means to uh, shock the establishment. He's doing it as a means to um, appeal to his base and to fulfill some campaign promises. Um, but, but those things do have consequences when they're not uh, well thought out. We, we've not seen this level of uh, protest before from uh, an executive order action by a president. Yeah, there's been a number of protests and a lot of people have said uh, his advisor, Steve Bannon, likes to create chaos. Is that some type of strategy that they're using to, as a distraction? Well, you know, I, I have heard that about uh, Steve Bannon as well. And um, in some ways, I think that is part of their strategy. It's kind of burned down the establishment. Uh, the, the challenge for the president will be he is now the establishment himself. And, um, and he is responsible not just for campaigning and making statements, but for governing. Um, so, so this is going to be the, the, the transition that he's going to need to make while at the same time uh, trying to appeal to his base and hopefully at the same time uh, trying to govern more as a centrist that uh, really uh, is beneficial to all Americans and, and actually all of the world. Of course, there's many uh, leaders, many of the United States allies who are concerned about some of the tone um, and content of what they're hearing from the president. Now, as a former business leader, I, I think uh, the president um, relied heavily upon people underneath him, and he set the tone. So in some ways, I think that the president sees himself as a CEO, and uh, he sets the big picture agenda, um, and, and he leaves the details to others. Uh, whether that's his White House staff or his cabinet. And, and we've already seen some indications of cabinet secretaries um, making statements and doing things that are somewhat at odds with uh, what the president has stated. And the, the president has actually said on one occasion that he would defer to uh, his cabinet on certain decisions and he, if they disagreed with them. So, he has not yet become a particularly hands-on president, uh, as many presidents in the past have been. The presidency is a 24-7 job, um, and, and I believe at this point he's seeing it more still as an extension of his campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to point out, you, you mentioned um, difference in opinions, and we have seen some uh, mixed uh, messages being sent, uh, particularly more recently with uh, Nikki Haley in, in terms of uh, Russia and things like that. Going back to, to Steve Bannon, you know, Time Magazine called uh, him a master manipulator. Can you think of anyone who has ever had this much power or sway over a president? Well, I think all presidents have had a, a right-hand person that they have turned to and have uh, accepted their advice. Um, most of those people have come from the world of government and they knew some things about how to govern. So Steve Bannon is uh, an exception to that. And he's also uh, different in the sense that uh, his basic attitude and orientation is to kind of burn down the establishment. And Bannon was a naval officer, right? Yes. Okay. Um, somebody, uh, some might say Karl Rove comes to mind uh, with President Bush. Would you agree with that? You know, Karl Rove was President Bush's, you know, political strategist, uh, just like Steve Bannon is President Trump's political strategist. Um, they each had an agenda. I mean, you can go back uh, in time as well. You can go back to uh, Mark Hanna, uh, a, a guy who basically uh, got William McKinley elected in 1896. And so there have always been these handlers. Uh, Woodrow Wilson had Colonel Howes. And there, there have always been these 
people who the president has turned to on their staff uh, who've been very significant and very important. Um, I think the difference here is uh, the, the level of experience and uh, the basic orientation of, uh, of Mr. Bannon in particular. All right, presidential historian Mike Purdy, thank you so much for providing your insight. Always appreciated. Certainly.